This video is sponsored by HelloFresh, but more about them later. So today we're gonna to be talking about some of my favorite magic systems. So I have been updating my favorites list uh, about two years ago. I made a bunch of favorite magic systems, favorite worlds, favorite series, favorite scene, blah. And uh, I've read more books since then. So I've been updating my list. This one is unique in that I recent, I just, I rewatched that video of my favorite, favorite magic systems and I still agree with my old self. That's rare. Usually I strongly disagree with my old self, especially two years ago, Murphy, she didn't know anything. But in this instance, she did all right. I actually, I think all of those series, especially the first four, all of them still make my favorite list. They're still some of my favorite magic systems. So instead of replacing the last video, I'll be updating it by expanding the list. So that was my top five back then. They're all still relevant. Now I'm gonna be talking about five more that I love that are now added to the list. The thing is, here's the thing. The thing is, as I continue to read more and more stories, I have been changing what I love or growing, expanding the kinds of things that I love. And as I am reading more, I'm, I'm falling in love with soft magic systems and soft world building and all that kind of stuff. I used to say, the more details, the better. Now I say, I love that, but do you know what I also love? Vagueness. I love when magic feels bigger than me. And I love, I have realized, I love magic that is rooted in nature. Magic that is rooted in landscape. And the Lord of the Rings makes magic that is connected to the earth feel so real and I love it. Lord of the Rings is another magic system that I'm not going to pretend to understand, but I will tell you what I like about it. And I think what I love about this magic so much is how ingrained in the earth it feels. Magical creatures and anomalies just feel like a part of the world, and those that live in the world just hope to be able to understand it. But it also feels unknowable, like there's really no way for me to wrap my head around the defined rules and boundaries of the story because well, there aren't any. Knowing magic isn't just inherent in the nature of beings like Galandriel and Gandalf, but it's a part of a deep understanding of how the world actually works, an understanding that can only be acquired over a long period of time, which is why usually the oldest characters in the books are the wisest and most powerful. There's tons of different magical things within this world. There's spells, runes that can be used to form weapons, objects like elven rings and dwarf doors, and even the ability to do things like summoning lightning. Each region and society within Middle-earth seems to have access to something new based on what they know and what knowledge has been passed down to them. And I like that feeling of endless opportunity of what you can discover depending on which region, which area of this world you're in. I like that feeling of awe. There's a quote in The Lord of the Rings that says, what some deem as magic others would define as everyday life. And that's kind of a theme in the story that what is called magic is genuinely, is generally just the unknown. It's what's foreign to the person that's seeing it. But to the person that's wielding said magic, this is just their culture, it's their life, it's what's been passed down, it's how they're connected to this earth. Even though the, the magic system of The Lord of the Rings is so vague and so soft, I don't know. To me, that just makes it feel that much more real because I've said this before in other videos, but for me, I think if magic were real, it would be unknowable. It would be un it would be impossible to fully wrap your head around it and know every piece of the rule. It wouldn't it wouldn't be so scientific. It would be more I can use it and I can participate in it, but at the end of the day, I don't know it because it is bigger than me. And plus two, I love Tom Bombadil, someone who the more connected he is with nature, the more he studies nature, the more he knows of the magic. And again, I love magic systems that are connected to the earth. And Tom Bombadil is an excellent representation of how connected this magic is to the earth. Next magic system on the list is gonna be Hunter Hunter. I've been loving a lot of soft magic systems lately, but one hard magic system that I have 
been totally enthralled by is the uh, the is Nen. It's one of the most balanced systems I've seen. It's the manipulation of one's own life force. So everybody has the potential to learn Nen, but it looks different on every single person. It's so versatile and it has seemingly endless outcomes. So everybody has an affinity to one aspect of Nen, enhancement, transmutation, emission, con con conjuration, manipulation, specialization. But there's also an individual side where you can have a unique ability to use you, like creating portals to jump through, making a double of yourself, creating bombs, or having the properties of both rubber and gum. So like for an example, if you're a transmuter, you could change the properties of your aura into something else, like lightning, or even choose selective properties of things and craft your own substance. Or conjuration allows you to morph your aura into a physical object according to your own laws and principles, like a weapon or a man-eating vacuum. But while you can master your own natural affinity at 100%, you also have access to the types that are closest to you on the graph, as well as a, to a lesser amount the further away you go. So like the most powerful users in the series are going to have attacks that will use multiple or almost all aspects of this chart. But you can also bargain with your own powers by giving yourself strict requirements and in exchange, gain greater power. And if you violate those conditions, then it could lead to massive consequences. And the greater the conditions, the greater potential reward. I don't know if I'm explaining this well. It's a very complicated system that's really, really cool. With how extremely detailed this magic system is and how much opportunity there is for unique use within it, it makes for some of the most fun fights because it's not a matter of who's stronger or who's knowledgeable about the magic, though these things do matter. Another huge factor of it is just who you're matched up against because it, you can watch one person fight against 20 different people and it's going to be a completely new experience every time because the individual individuality of this magic system makes it so that every fight and every encounter with it is its own isolated thing. Plus, this system keeps evolving and keeps changing. It's always the core of it is always the same. It's not inconsistent, it is consistent. But every time we interact with a new landscape or a new situation or a new type of villain, we get to see how deep this magic system goes and how much opportunity there is for it. So even though after Nen was explained thoroughly to me, I felt like I, okay, I understand this pretty well. With each new encounter we have with the world, it just gets expanded and expanded and expanded, which makes it feel like the opportunities of this magic really are limitless. My next favorite magic system is when food magically appears in your home all the ingredients you need are there without you ever having to go to the store, as well as a recipe just there that you can easily follow and then have ridiculously delicious food. I know it's amazing. Wouldn't you want it in your life? But the good news is it's not in a novel because it exists in real life. This magic is real and it's called HelloFresh. HelloFresh delivers fresh, quality produce to your door in less than a week. It also allows you to customize your box by swapping out one protein or one side for another, upgrading, or adding a protein or veggie to a meal. That means more choices, more variety, and more meals tailored to you. You don't have to deal with trips to the store, the portions are already made so you're not wasting food, and the recipes are delicious. Seriously, I've been using the service for nearly two years now and we love it. Some of my favorite recipes, I love the crispy buffalo sliced chicken, so delicious. We love their boca bowls and basically anything tacos, we're all about. Update your delivery address and have HelloFresh at your vacation destination. You can also line up kid-friendly recipes and they offer veggie, pescatarian, and fit and wholesome meals to make it easy to stick to your goals. Bippity, boppity, boo! What are you doing? I'm being a wizard. Why? Because HelloFresh is like magic. So go to HelloFresh.com and use code MURPHY16 for 16 free meals across seven boxes and three free gifts. 
It's so good. I'm gonna eat it. No, it's so mine. My next favorite magic system is in Avatar The Last Airbender. So I've tried really hard as I've done these favorites lists to not just keep repeating the same series over and over again. So with Avatar, it was almost in my favorite worlds, but I decided to withhold because it really needed to be in favorite magic systems even more. So bending isn't something that everyone in this world has access to, but if you're born with the ability to bend an element, you could learn to bend either by observing the original benders like Toph or by learning from someone who already knows. You learn to bend by learning correct motions, by being connected to your element, and by being connected to yourself and having a balance within yourself. So the elements are obviously water, earth, fire, and air, and each have unique abilities and limitations to them. But what's cool about bending is how it builds on itself. Like water bending starts with moving water, but you could learn to turn it into ice. You could pull from plants and even manipulate plants themselves, or even control people's blood. And it's the same with all the elements. With earth bending, you could learn to bend metal. Fire benders can learn to redirect lightning. All of this makes bending feel tangible yet limitless. I am a massive fan of elemental magic. I always have been. I started watching Avatar as an adult, but even as a child, elemental magic has always been one of my favorite types of magic out there. I love the way the elemental magic is done in Avatar because, because it's based off of actual real martial arts. And so, and because the the directors of the show, the makers of the show, made great efforts to learn about these styles of martial arts so that they could really incorporate it into the movements of the magic, which makes this magic feel so fluid, which also makes it feel real to me. It feels like if I, if I had the ability, if I possessed what it takes to be a magic user, a bender, then I too could learn the correct movements to move the tides and and then to lift it and all the things that you do. And I could also bend water. Also, also, and, and, I love that elemental magic isn't the only kind of magic in the in this world, which makes it just feel that much bigger and wider. Even though we're following benders and normies, we're following people of this world that use this type of magic. There's also giant owl spirits that protect a library and might kill you if you use it wrong. There's also face stealers that might steal your face off if you look at it the wrong way if you make an expression you know there's so many cool elements to this magic system that involve the spirit world as well as the bending Malazan, Book of the Fallen. The Warrens of Magic dwelt in the beyond find the gate and nudge it open a crack what leaks out is yours to shape open yourself to the Warren that comes to you that finds you draw forth its power as much as your body and soul are capable of containing. But remember, when the body fails, the gate closes. I do not understand the magic of Malazan, and I will not pretend to, but I will give you a quick glimpse into what I understand about it so far and what I like about it. And probably my favorite element of this system of this world is the Warrens. A Warren is kind of like a doorway. It's a realm that only mages, priests, shamans, people like that, people who use magic, draw their power from. It could be a physical other world that can be traveled to, or it can be a form of magic which could be shaped by someone who channels the warren. So you can step through a warren and go somewhere else, or you can step through a warren and have and gain some sort of ability or knowledge or power. As I understand it, magic in this world is essentially accessible to anyone. Anyone can learn it, but it's not easy to learn. You have to find someone who will teach you. But if you do find someone to teach you, you will only be learning about one type of warren to make because there's dozens that you can learn. But it's also not easy to find someone who's willing to teach you because it's incredible power that could easily be misused in the wrong hands. Also, there's huge consequences to it. A misstep learning magic could be fatal to you and everyone around you. So there's a risk re reward aspect that makes it so that the people who do learn this magic is far more limited. Plus there's also stuff like holds, like warrens are more concentrated magic as I understand it, like more, more tamed magic, but a hold is like raw power that's very hard to control and very unpredictable. 
But what's cool about this whole thing is that the people who use the magic themselves don't totally know the limits and capabilities and are constantly surprising themselves and other people about what they can or can't achieve. One thing that I really love about this magic system, even though it's so vast and there's so many different things that it covers, there's so many different things that that it can do in this world, is I love how tactile it is. It's I feel like each time it's described using a warren or using an object that has an ability. I feel like I'm right there, which I feel this way about these books in general. I think that Erickson's writing is very, very immersive, but it just, it's so experiential. And while it's very complex and there's a ton of different facts, facets of it, and there's so much going on within the magic of this world, it's also very soft. Nothing is, ex is explained to the nth degree. Everything has a lot of mystery to it has a lot of unknown to it at least I've read three books where I am I feel that way like I feel like I have the basics of near everything but nothing do I understand fully and I really like that feeling as I've been mentioning a lot in these updated videos I used to be all about hard magic systems hard world building all that and I'm coming to love the wibbly wobblies I'm coming to love when magic just feels bigger than my ability to understand it the last thing that I'm going to talk about is going to be more of a a concept than an actual magic system from a book, kind of like how I joked about HelloFresh, and it's nautical stuff. If you know me, you know I am obsessed with the sea, I'm obsessed with the ocean, I'm obsessed with water and nautical stories and just being at the sea myself, just, just water. I love, love it. So stories where you're set at sea and the magic is directly tied to the sea. I really, really loved the magic in this one. There's so many different ways to do nautical magical stories and I, it's my favorite. But then I also really, really love stories specifically where the magic is tied into protecting the sea or tied into protecting people who are, who have been thrown into sea, who are lost at sea, who are, um, you know, that sort of thing. It's more of a concept because I don't actually have one nautical magic system to rule them all. My favorite, my favorite nautical magic system, but I just, any magic system that is directly tied to the sea, I'm naturally going to love it that much more. And in fact, if you, if you know of a story that is nautical, where the people hold the magic, the person that we're following holds the magic, and it's a magic that's tied to the sea, like maybe they can waterbend, right? Like they can move the water, or, or their magic is tied to protecting the sea. The reason that they're here is to protect the waters. If you know that story, please tell me because I'm always, always looking for more nautical stories, always looking for more nautical, nautical magic systems. That's my updated list. The last list, which will be linked, is still good. It's still like, I all, I intentionally have not repeated the magic systems on the other list because this is an expansion of that list. So go check out that video too, because I stand by every single series that I said in that video. I'd love to hear from you. What are some of your favorite magic systems? Do you like any of them on my list? Do you hate any of them on my list? And what do you think, based off of the magic systems that I love, what do you think that I should be reading? I post videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday here, Tuesdays and Thursdays on the other channel, which is linked in the description. I'll see you again soon, bye.